All right, here we are for game one of the sealed deck match of the Lorado Wild West Custom Magic Set. Yes. If you guys saw the deck building, you know that I'm in blue-black splash red control, even though Abby and I both think that control isn't very good in this format. We're going to try it anyway. And Abby's playing another deck that we played with a different sealed pool that we built on the same website. So Yeah, you guys and also to be fair, I just don't think control's very good in any format. Oh, shots <laughs> fired. Anyway, so I got this opening hand here. We have all our colors. That's great. We only have two six drops with our Tin Man and our Spider, but whatever, we can get there with this mug of beer, tap down Abby stuff if she's aggro, and, yep. you know, I think we'll be good. But Abby won the die roll for once, so she gets to go first. I so. did, and I'm going to put down this pupper, and then there you can go. All right, so let's draw, and we get Penetrating Round, okay? Expensive removal. We'll play our island and pass the turn. All right. So next turn, we'll play our mug of beer. Hopefully, Abby doesn't have a blazing start. She is black, so could be aggressive if she's like black-white, like we, we had an exhibition, or maybe black-red, mm. but it seems to be black and green. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? All right, all right. So we will untap, <laughs> draw, and we get nimble, ooh, nimble spell singer. Okay, so that'll be something to do on the next turn, but for now, we'll play mug of beer and pass the turn. All right. All right, all right. I see your mug of beer. So Nimble Spell Slinger, eh, we only have one non-creature spell in our hand currently, so not the greatest, but so far Abby isn't off to a huge start either, so we'll see what's going on. Yeah, you will, won't you? Oh, okay, Plains 2, so we got three colors. <laughs> oh, it's a Scavenging Vulture. So yes. 2-1 Flyer, and then you can exile a creature card from a graveyard to gain two life. Okay, cool. So kind of... You know, you can start scavenging off my graveyard. Start beating us down in the air, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right, all set. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so we will untap, draw. We get a swamp, sure, but I want to keep building up our board, so we're going to play the nimble spell slinger and pass turn. All right. I think just obviously leaving up, doing nothing, just to tap down Evie's vulture. I think that's not a great plan. We need to get some stuff on the board. And yeah, then... I think you do too. Uh oh, is that a is that a warning? That's a threat, home dog. What do you got? <laughs> All right, so we have three mana for something, and it's a roaming buffalo. Vanilla, yes. Vanilla two four for th for three though. That's not bad. So so vanilla. And it actually holds back this guy pretty well. We'd have to prowess him up twice before we can get through. So hmm. All right, coming in in the air. Yep. All right, so we take two down to eighteen. So we will untap and draw. We get an island. Okay. I don't think we need many more lands. But right now we have a straight of a two and a three. So that means we have a straight of two. So this thing costs four to cast. So I think we might as well do that. So we'll play our Tin Man, and then we'll pass the turn. All right. Since we can't really attack with this guy into the buffalo, so... Hmm. Mug of Beer not looking so great, because we've just been kind of tapping out every turn. Maybe in the next... Maybe next turn it'll be better if we don't use this, but... And maybe the turns after that, once we run out of things to do, it'll be nice to have around, but we'll see how it works. All right, so Abby has something for four mana. It's into the sunset. <laughs> so you exile target creature, and then I gain life equal to its toughness, so it's like a more expensive sorcery speed sword to plowshares. So. Yeah, essentially. So you're getting rid of the Tin Man Grifter? Of course. So walking off into the tin-colored sunset? He is. <laughs> And then Clanking we, off into the sunset. Yeah, we gain four. All right, that's actually that's actually really bad for us because that was like our main attacker right there for the time being. I know. <laughs> you get in with both or just the vultures? Both. Okay, one, two, three, four, down to eighteen. All right. Yeah. So you gain four, and then you know. Yep. So it's like uh, nothing happened. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Are you Go. all set? Yep. All right. Draw, and we get career criminal. All right, career criminal is pretty cool. So. Hmm. We're not going to be able to block this on anything, so I guess we might as well attack with our Spell Slinger. Right, so you're going to take, gonna take two. two? Yeah. Okay, down to 18. And then we'll play an Island and tap four to play Career Criminal. And we'll pass the turn. All right. So this is kind of interesting. If Abby gets, you know, she starts to keep, if she keeps attacking with stuff, then we'll be able to just get in and draw cards easily. But if she doesn't, then we might be able to just discard some excess islands or swamps that we draw and sift through our deck that way with this guy. So mm -hmm. seems like a win-win to me, but we'll see what she does. Oh, cattle drive. <laughs> so you get three 1-1 one, one white ox creature tokens. Ugh. Yes. I love the oxes. They're great. And there's one ox, two ox, three ox. Okay. Yep. 
I mean, ugh, that's not great for us because that makes it like, well, it's going to be harder to get through with this guy unless we discard cards. So we'll see how it goes. Getting in with both again. Oh, well, yeah. All right, one, two, three, four. Can't do much. We do need to answer this flyer at some point, but we'll see what happens. So let's untap, draw, ghostly presence. Okay, that's not terrible. We'll play mountain, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, this is a good answer for pretty much everything Abby has going on currently. Um, I think, I think we'll wait until next turn to attack with these guys though because they hold back the oxes pretty well so I'm gonna go ahead and play the arachnoid mark two four eight with reach try and get through that vulture okay oh, okay <laughs> right, pass turn to you so again we could have attacked with these guys here but I really I don't want to discard anything in my hand just yet so yeah the reason we didn't attack with these guys last turn is because I kind of like our hand I mean ghostly presence isn't very good but it might be good next turn if we start attacking with these guys and whatnot so I didn't really want to discard anything just yet. It was maybe it would would have been a good idea just to discard this and draw a card, but it's just a land is so bad at this point that I'd rather have this over like a random land or whatever. And this guy, I'd, I'd rather just keep these two guys back to block any oxes that Abby tries to get in with. So, all right, but she's got something else. What is it? Oh no, another into the sunset. <laughs> yes, I'm not a fan of giving you eight life on uh, a platter, but it gets rid of that spider real nice. Yeah, I mean, gaining the 8 life makes it a little bit easier for me. I mean, that's a couple hits from these guys still that we get to uh, endure now, but I would have much rather had the 4-8 reach around. <laughs> 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 oh, things that accidentally get said while playing Murata. <laughs> All right, Abby, you going to attacks? Yeah, thank God that 4-8 reach around was near. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, my God. All right, so yeah, coming in with the old buffalo and vulture again for four. Yep. Two, three, four. <laughs> All right, down to 18. All right. All set? Yep, go ahead. All right, so we'll untap draw. We get, ugh, an island. Okay, so we're definitely going to do something with this guy. So I think what we'll do is we'll activate his ability. We'll discard this island, make it so that he can't be blocked this turn, and then we will attack with him. So... Can't be blocked, so you take two. Oh, yeah, sure, whatever. All right, and then when we don't combat damage, we draw a card. Starry Visions. All right, that's not bad. To draw um, something good. Yeah, I mean, we could just play Penetrating Round on the Vulture, but I don't think I'm going to do that yet. We are at 18. I'd rather just keep searching for some good stuff to do. So let's play Starry Visions. So we look at the top three cards of our library, and then we do what? We put one into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. So we can get a Stallion, a Sigil, and a Dowsing Prospector. Blech, none of these are that great. So, I mean, a Stallion doesn't really do much right now. We have enough mana. Dowsing Prospector does help us get deeper into the deck, but like the 2-1 body isn't really doing much. I think, honestly, I just want the Sigil, just so we can keep digging through our deck. So I'm going to take the Sigil here, and then we put the rest in our graveyard. Put the Starry Night in our graveyard, and then I will cast... Well, let's not tap the Swamp. I'll cast the Highest D Sigil, so when it comes into play, I draw a card and an island. And we'll just keep that island around to do this again next turn. And then we'll pass turn to Abby. All right. The good news is, after all that, we have Ghostly Presence up, and we have Mug of Beer up. So we'll see if that comes in handy. All right, so I'm going to go to attack. All right, so before you do that, yep. I'm going to tap down... I'll tap down your bird with mug of beer. Oh, not cool. All right. All right, so in response, actually, I'm just going to tap it myself. Oh, uh, you're going to use And gain two life. Ability? So you're exiling a creature from a graveyard? Yes. Uh, which creature from which graveyard? I'm going to exile Steel Stallion from your graveyard. Okay, fair enough. So then you gain two, so you go up to 18. Yes. Oops. Wrong way. All right, so now you're gonna now you can go to attacks. Attack all with right. the buffalo and ox, or just the buffalo. Let's get them all in there. Get them all in there. Yeah. Okay, that's a little interesting. Seems like some sort of trick, but I don't really know how much we can play around tricks right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and block an ox. All right. And all I right. take four. Uh oh, you have something. Oh, see you in hell. Okay, yeah, you have all the good removal spells in your deck. Jeez. So you're going to see you in hell on the ox that I blocked. 
Yep. And then what are you going to kill from me? All right, so I'm going to use my see you in hell to kill the career criminal. All right, so the ox and the career criminal are linked in this fatal contract now. Okay. Yes. So, is that all you have? Now we can go to damage? Yes. Okay, so I take one, two, three, four from the unblocked guys. Mm -hmm. Then this ox dies, yep. right? And then when that ox dies, because it was blocked by this, the career criminal also dies. Okay, fair enough. That sucks. I mean, we were really hoping to keep that around so we could sift through our deck more and get rid of these lands, but whatever. Hey, no worries. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> all right, all set? Yep. Okay, so we will untap, draw. Ugh, that is not what we wanted. Hmm. Yeah, I think we got to go ahead and do this. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. We'll do penetrating round mm -hmm. on the vulture. To give it minus three, minus three, and you lose three life. Oh, bummer. So down to 15. And the reason we're doing that now is so that way Abby wouldn't be able to activate it again. Might as well get that while we can. And then we'll play a swamp and pass a turn. Oh, okay. Playing the land there so that way we keep up um, a mug of beer and we're not attacking because we want to block more oxes or oxen if Abby wants to get in with them. So I gain a life from my land. Ah, yes. Blooming of table, table lands, sure. We'll just come in for the beats with the buffalo, I guess. All right, buffalo coming in. All right, well, before you attack, I'm going to mug of beer it and tap it, and you gain a life. Oh, okay. So you're up to... You lost a life. Go up to, go, so you go up to 17. All right, I guess I'm drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> also, to note, Abby played a red land over here, so she's probably splashing red or green for something. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Riverboat Gambler. Yes. So when it comes into play, each, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is your longest straight. So you have a 3, 0, and a 5. So you have a straight of 1. So I lose 1, and you gain 1 up to 18. All right, so I gain 1. All right, and yeah, I mean, that wasn't the, the best. Obviously, you'd rather do it when you have a straight of two or more, but I think that was a good play because now at least you have two creatures that can attack into my guy here, and I'll only be able to tap down one of them. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Dead aim. Okay, that's a decent thing to do. I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to crack our highest D sigil here. Draw a card, see what we get. Another highest D sigil. Sure. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and play another highest sigil. Draw a card. It's an island. Great. Well, we'll play our other island. That way we can keep up Mug of Beer and this, and we'll pass a turn. All right. So go ahead. To note, we could cast Dead... Oh, no, we can't cast Dead Man's Sorcery, but we could cast Ghostly Presence to make this guy 3-3, three, three, but this still doesn't do very much, so... All right, so I'm going to go to my attack phase. All right, so, okay, well, in your attack, I will tap down the roaming buffalo, and you gain a life up to 19. Okay. Coming in with the 2-4? I mean, oh, coming in with everything, okay. Um, this again, huh? Well, I just, I don't see any reason. I mean, we still have this up as well, worst comes to worst, so, yeah. All right, we'll block an ox. Take three? Uh, nope. Before that, oh, another see you in hell. Okay, so I guess you're targeting what the ox and the nimble spell slinger. Yes. Okay, so I take so we'll go to damage then. Yep. All right, so I take three, mm -hmm. two, three, and then the the ox dies. So let's get that ox out of here, and then the nimble spell slinger dies. But oh, this feels real bad. You have to use this. <laughs> We got a trick. Because, I mean, it doesn't even block this, and it doesn't block this. All it would do is prevent this. But we do gain two life, so, yeah, I think I'm going to... I think I just have to do it. So we'll use Ghostly Presence yeah. on this. So when it dies, it comes back to play. <laughs> so this thing goes to the graveyard temporarily, but then we'll just get it back. Boom. And we gain two life up to 12. Well, all right, then. Okay. How Ugh. ghostly. Again, I'm not a huge fan of that. I would have rather saved that for one of our better creatures to save, but I think we're under a decent amount of pressure here, and we need to do something. Ooh, all right, good. So we drew Tawny Tuxter, and when that comes into play, we draw X cards where X is our longest straight. So if we play this, it's a three, and we have a two and a three, so we'll have a straight of two. So I think we'll start off by doing that. So let's play Tawny Tuxter. Comes into play. We draw two cards because we have a straight of two. Ooh, now we're getting into the good part of our deck. Where have you been the whole time? All right, so we'll play Cyclone Rifter. 3-3 three, three Prowess gives all the guys flying when you cast a non-creature spell. And I think, yeah, let's let's get in for two damage here. 
You gonna take it? Oh yeah. Um, right. well, oh, let me block with my invisible creature. <laughs> hey, you never know. All right, we'll end the turn. And the reason we attack there is obviously because, again, the only reason, the only thing we can block is the ox, and these guys already block the ox very well, and, as well as these other things. So, I see no reason why not to get in for some damage. All right. So, got some business to do here because I don't <laughs> like I don't like that cyclone rider. Oh no. I'll be honest. So. He's going to oh, hang. Hang. All right, so destroy a creature that's two more creature types. Very flavorful, very terrible. Cyclone, so Cyclone Rider? Yep. All right, Cyclone Rider down. That sucks. We still have our one four, though, so. Yeah, so want to go to combat? Yep, can't tap anything. No mana open. Go ahead. Yes, mama. All right, here we so go. So you attack with both your two fours? Yep. And we'll just block one of them and take two? Yeah. All right, down to ten. It's your turn. Okay, so that sucks. Untap, draw. We lost one of the best cards in our deck. Well, we drew a crappy card, so we're going to sacrifice this highest D sigil. One, two, and three. Draw a card. Oh my god, this is awful. <sighs> so the good news is that we have the mug of beer and this thing to block, so we can tap down one of them, block the other. So we will attack with our nimble spell slinger. Take two, or... I'll take two. All right, down to 15. So go ahead. It's very interesting that this game has progressed very differently than our exhibition matches. It's much, much slower. I mean, this is turn, like, what, 10, 11, 12 or something? We're both at, like, 10 or more life. And, oh, God. Ooh, Moxonite Shard. All right, cool. So that's one of the Mythic Rares in the set that Abby was lucky enough to get in her pool. Yes. So as an additional cost to cast it, you sack a land, which you did, and now you can tap it for any color of mana. Uh -huh. For these mysterious splash colors that you're playing. Oh, yes. We haven't seen anything of yet. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to hog tie your huckster. Oh, my God. Hog tie my huckster. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fair enough. So that means it can't attack or block as long as you control a creature and you have three of them. So, yeah. All right, so you go into combat? Yep, I'm going to go to combat. All right, and I will just tap your buffalo and you gain a life up to 16. Sweet. So you'll come in for two or actually three. Yeah, I'm going to come in for three. One, two, three. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh my god, this is the longest game ever. <laughs> yeah, it is a very long game, but you're playing a very removal-heavy deck, so... Alright, so has it come to this? Is this what we have to do here? We're at seven. We're getting beaten down. Tawny's Huckster isn't doing anything. Yep, I think it's time. So, we're going to do See You in Hell on your Buffalo and your Gambler. Okay. And then... Oops. One, two, three. We're going to use dead aim on your buffalo. Oh, okay. All so right. we destroy the buff uh, buffalo. Buffalo dies. And I get three damage. And yeah, and the gambler dies, and you lose three life. Wow, that's kind of crazy. And we get prowess twice on this guy because I cast two non-creatures. So we will attack for four. Oh, I guess I'll take that. Dang. Good so you're down to nine. And yeah. these guys should be in your graveyard. Oh, my bad. All right, and then, yep, we will pass the turn. All right. Let's so, see. I mean, I wasn't super happy about using all of our removal spells on kind of these crappy creatures right here, these little two fours, but we don't really have any other option. We're getting beaten down. We're not doing anything. We're drawing nothing but land over here. So I think it was maybe not. Maybe it will come back to bite us, but I think it made sense in the moment. All right, so I'm going to play Feather Swine. Uh, feather Swine. All right, 1 3 flying. Yep. Yes, and I'm going to start combat. Uh, so do we tap down? The question is do we tap down the ox, and but Abby gains a life up to nine? Um, up to eight. Up uh, or up to ten. Up to ten. <laughs> neither of us can do math today. Nope. No, um, I'm just going to say a go. Go ahead. Yep, that's fine. Oh, all right then. You can, I'm going to get it for one. Yep, take one down to six. And again, I think the only way we're going to win is by Abby go. not having much to do and by us drawing some um, some good stuff to, be to beef this guy up with. So we'll see what happens. We drew Last Will and Testament, which is actually nice. So we're going to go ahead and play Last Will and Testament, and we will put it on our Nimble Spell Slinger. So when it dies, we get to search for any card, and that prowesses it up to a 3-3, and we'll attack. Oh, all right, I'll take three. All right, down to six. Yep. And we'll end the turn. So, again, things aren't looking great over here, but I think we'll do something interesting with this mug of beer this turn. That will hopefully be kind of cool. 
Oh dear God! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is this? And you will you lose a life? Oops! Oh no, Malastrix. So first of all, you, you lose a life from your dual land. That's fine. But this is one of the myth, the other mythic. You got two mythics in your pool. Super lucky in Abby's pool. So Malastrix is a giant dragon. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you can pay blue and a red, a black and a red. And if you do, Malastrix does five damage to that creature. So as long as Abby keeps up a black and a red mana, we basically can't play many creatures. All right, so I'm going to start combat. Start combat? Uh, yep, come on in. All right. So you're going to get in with Feather Swine and Ox? Yep, yep. we take two. All this set? This is a crazy game, yep. All right, during your end step, we will use Mug of Beer to tap Tawny's Huckster, and we gain a life. <laughs> <laughs> She's not doing anything else. Might as well gain fair some enough, life. Fair enough, fair All right, so we got Giant Catfish. Sure, whatever. So this Malastrix, just being a 5-5 five five is going to be a huge problem. We could, we may just, because if we, if, if we pass turn and Abby untaps all this stuff and we flash in Giant Catfish, Abby just pays, you know, a red and a black and then Malastrix kills our Giant Catfish. So if we're going to play this thing, then we kind of have to do it now. But what I think we're going to do is we need an answer for it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going, well, let me think. Because if we even if we tap down Malastrix, Abby goes up to five, and we have no way of dealing extra. So I'm going to go ahead and attack with this for two. Are you going to block or take the two? Um, I'll take two. You'll take two. Oh, my plan failed. All right, you're down to three. Yep. And since we don't want our giant catfish to die to the Malastrix, Mal Malastrix trigger, oh my God. I just play it now. Might as well just play another land and pass the turn. It's not looking too great over here. We also have to tap down Malastrix with the mug of beer just so that we don't dive from five damage in the air. So, ugh. Right. So it's not looking too great. Oh, we need to find a way to kill this guy and get our last will and testament to work. But Abby has something else to play. I've oh, got no. Farrah's Blessing. Farrah's Blessing. That's what we saw in the uh, exhibition match. So, who are you putting it on? I'm going to put it on Feather Swine. Yeah, that makes sense. So now you have two big flyers. So that means Feather Swine gets. Plus three, plus three, so it's a four, six. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, you coming in for attacks? Um, yeah. Are you going to tap him down anymore? Yeah, I will tap down your Malastrix, and you gain a life up to four. All right, so, yeah, I will come in for four. Come in for four in the air? Yep, there's not much we can do about that. One, two, three, four, down to one. Oh, this is insane. All set? Yes. Oh, this is so crazy. Go. All right, we'll untap, draw, and okay, okay, fair enough. So we'll go to combat, and we will attack with the giant catfish and the nimble spell slinger. All right, well, do you have any blocks? Yes, I do. I will block that catfish, and I'll take two from the spell slinger. All right, well, one second. We will cast four damage. It's see you in hell. We'll do that on the Ox and Malastrix. Oh, no. Really? Yes. So when the Ox dies, Malastrix oh, dies. That's terrible. And this guy gets Prowess as well, and he untaps. So you take three down to one. Yes. All right. And, yep. We'll go ahead. I guess we might as well play another land and pass the turn. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> so it seemed like we were going to die, but ooh, that Sea and Hell was pretty good. Now we can tap down Abby's Feather Swine. That's currently only a 2-4, so it's not as lethal as it was. A hogtie? Sure, sure. We have two guys who are not currently hogtied. Who are you, who are you hogtying? I guess I'm going to hogtie the mm. catfish. Catfish? Okay. Yeah. I mean, either way, if you, no matter which one you hogtie, if that's the only thing you have this turn, then I think we win. Do you have something in your hand that I'm not aware of? Because I'm coming in for attacks. Uh, okay. Um, before you attack, I will mug of beer it so it can't attack, and you gain one up to two. Oh, no! I'm <laughs> dead! Take it. Is that, all, is that all good? Is that all good? Oh, shit. You go to two life? Yes, but I'm dead. Oh, all no. All right, pass the turn. Yeah. All right. I think we got it. Untap, draw. Swamp, who cares? We attack for two. Oh, Is it man. good? Yeah, it's good. All right. I don't have any wow. Win. Man, when that Malastrix came down, I thought Shoot. we were done for. Nice job. Nice job. All right, cool. That was a good game, actually. That was really, that was very different from our exhibition matches where pretty much aggro intensity, you know? So, whew.
that was an interesting match. Abby just had tons of removal. Yeah. She had, what, hog tie into the sunset, see you in hell, hang, and then just bombs to bring it up with. So not yeah. super aggressive. Let's see, is there anything we want to sideboard here? Sheep's clothing? There's a couple of um, oxes, but I don't know if this is something we'd want to bring in. We'll see. I don't think we need these guys. don't think we need this. I mean, this might actually be kind of cool if we could get one of Abby's... Um, Kill spells with Miss Cassidy sure shot. Ooh, that'd be fantastic. Wanted, yeah, don't think we want that. Don't think we want that. Don't think we want that. So the things that I'm thinking about are the Miss Cassidy because it not only counters a kill spell, but it also we can copy those kill spells. And it just seems like fun. So I think we'll try and bring that in. And the other one would be Sheep's Clothing because Abby did play that um, the Ox Herd token maker so and this would be a good way to help get through those so let's see if there's anything bad mug of beer seems good career criminals good cyclone riders good dowsing prospectors okay horn serpents okay i like all of our flyers i love the huckster last will and testament sigil i like these this yeah i'm gonna get rid of ghostly presence that just was very underwhelming i like our removal trail sickness seems fine um, let's see here. I think we'll just get rid of the Dowsing Prospector. I mean, just a 2-1 doesn't seem like it's going to do much, and if Abby has a lot of oxes or whatever, or oxen and other tokens, then it's just going to die. And Scry one's good, but we have the sigils and the star revisions and other ways to get through our deck. So cool. We'll see what happens in round two. All right, here we are for round two of the Lorado Sealed match. This is game, you said, this is round two. I'm up a game, so that means Abby's going first. Mm -hmm. Our hand's pretty good. We got our main colors. We got some removal, got some dudes. Yep, seems good. All Keeping right. your hand, Abby? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. To note, yeah, so I was just going to say, Abby, last game we saw a lot of white and a lot of black, and we saw red for Malastrix. I don't think we saw any green cards. So, go ahead, but I'm very interested in what the green is there for. We'll see what happens. Someday you'll find out. I guess. All right, we got the <laughs> sheep's clothing, which is at least, you know, something to do on turn three before we play probably career criminal in turn four, so not complaining. All right, arachnoid, not for a long time. Pass the turn. Nothing to do, but again, we do get sheep's clothing next turn, so that's pretty good. Sheep's clothing into criminal, into catfish, into arachnoid, or in serpent. If we just keep drawing lands for the next few turns, I'll be happy. All right, buffalo, 2-4. Yes. Seems good. We will untap, draw. Swamp, great. My dream of lands is coming true. And we'll play sheep's clothing. So we need to make a wolf and attach it to sheep's clothing. So this is a 2-2 two -two that is... 2-2 two -two wolf sheep that can't be blocked by boar, goat, horse, ox, or sheep. Ooh, that's <laughs> impressive. So and this is an ox, so that means this can't be blocked by it. Wow. So, yeah, that's a decent sideboard card, you know? These guys were tough to get through, and uh, you had some ox makers, some ox token makers, so we'll see how this works out. All right, so I gain a life from Boomtown. Yep, gain a life up to 21. All right. I will pay a life and for a black. All right, down to 20. And what do you got? Ah, scavenging vulture, very nice. Yes. Two one flyer, gain some life. Coming in for beats. Yeah, going for beats. All right, sounds good. Yep, down to eighteen. Mm -hmm. Ah, so your wolf can't be blocked by an ox, but it can be blocked by a bird. It can be blocked by a bird, yes. Oh! Not too concerned about that if that's what happens though. So, so we'll draw an island, great. So yeah, let's go ahead to attacks. Attack with whoops, not with our equipment, but we'll attack with our two two. Yeah, I'll take two. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you take two down to 18. Yep. And I mean, again, it might seem like a little aggressive for us to do that while we're being beaten down, but we can't block this and we can't really block this, so why not? So I think we're still at a decently a decent life total, so I'm going to go ahead and play Career Criminal and then pass the turn. All right. We could have just, you know, flashed in Giant Catfish to block the Buffalo and save some life, but we can do that anytime, and I'd rather start sifting through our deck if that's what we want. And next turn, we can play five mana and get down Horn Serpent, who blocks this guy just as well. So, not too concerned. All right, so Abby has five mana, and you're tapping it all. All right, lose yes. a life. Good. What do we got? Naki Shepherd. Oh, no, not Naki Shepherd. Yes. So, that was the all star in your uh, in the exhibition matches oh, it's good. in your livestock tribal deck. So, this thing comes into play. You get three, zero, one white goats, and then you can put a plus one, plus one on a boar, goat, horse, ox, or sheep. So, you can put on this ox over here or any of your three 
delicious goats. My. The only good news is that we do have the sheep's clothing that we brought in, so that means these goats and the ox cannot block whatever's wearing the sheep's clothing. Uh, but so. the bird can. The bird can, and the Naki shepherd can. But all right, coming in for attacks. Yep, I'm gonna come in for beats. All right, Are you ready? I'm ready. Right, coming in for four. One, two, three, four. All right. All set? Yep, all set. Go ahead. Okay, untap, draw, get another land. Not complaining about that, because I think we want six lands is probably where we'd like to be. And then I think we're good after that. So, yeah, let's get in with our wolf and career criminal. All right. So need to note we don't really need to give discard a card on this to give it a blockable, because what's Abby going to block with? All right, so you took all four? Yep. All right, so we draw a card from the career criminal. Second main. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and play that. So we'll play our Cyclone Rider. It's a 3-3 prowess dude, and we will pass end the turn. So that means next turn, we could cast Penetrating Round to like deal with the Shepherd or Vulture or something. And then that will give all of our guys flying, thanks to the Cyclone Rider. And it'll kill the dude, and we'll get him for some more damage, draw a card. So seems good. We'll see what Abby does this turn, though. All right, so Abby's playing two for Hogtie. Yeah, I'm going to Hogtie that guy that's drawing you cards. The career criminal? Yeah. All right, makes sense. So he can't attack or block anymore, mm -hmm. unfortunately. That kind of sucks. Yep, and then I'm going to play... All right, tap on Boomtown, take a life, and you're playing... Appleseed Ghoul. Apple, oh, so that's what your green is for. So this is like a zombie Johnny Appleseed? Yeah, I get a plant and everything. It's pretty wild. All right, so when it comes to play, you get a 0-1 green plant, and then you can pay a black and sacrifice a creature to give target creature minus one, minus one. Wow, so that's actually really good with all your goats and tokens and whatnot. Yes. But that your, evil plant. There's your evil plant. All right, so I'm going to come in for beats. All right, coming in for attacks? Yep. All right, what's coming in? We do have our 3-3 prowess, so beware of that. All right, so you're coming in with the buffalo and the vulture. Yes. So, ah, so if we block the buffalo, then Abby can put a plus one, plus one counter on it, making it a 3-4, so we can't block there and it can't block the flyer, so we'll take the damage. All right, and I will put a plus one, plus one counter on the buffalo. All right, and so we'll take one, two, three, four, five. Yes. All right, one, two, three, four, five. That was a big hit, down to nine. Mm-hmm, go ten. All right, so we'll untap, draw... Swamp. So Abby's at 12, but she is amassing a giant army. Hmm. So we can play... We have a couple options here. We'll put uh, put this guy off to the side, so that way we don't think about him too much. So if we play a non-creature spell, like Penetrating Round here, then that gives this guy prowess. He'll be 4, and this will be 2 in the air, so we hit Abby for 6. And then if we have another follow-up next turn with a non-creature spell, then we might be able to just win the game. But if that fails, then we might be in a lot of trouble. So I think I just feel safer playing this. So yeah, I think we will go ahead and do that. So let's go to attacks. And if we just play this, then that will be able to hold off the giant buffalo. So we'll take one, two, three, four, five. Take like five damage or something next turn. So yeah, why don't we attack with the sheep, the, the wolf sheep, and the cyclone rider. All right, so you're coming in for five? Yeah, coming in for five. Wow, and you take it? All right. That's what I like to hear. Whatever. All right, so then we'll go to our second main, and we will pay six to cast the Arachnid Mark II with Reach. And we'll end the turn. All right. So this could go bad for us if Abby has a kill spell for our arachnoids, because we take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the plus one plus one counter nine. Ugh, maybe we got a little too greedy there. We'll see. But if she has the one that you know exiles and gives us uh, life into the sunset, then you know we can take the hit. So not a huge deal. All right. So two mana, feather swine. Yes. <laughs> sure. That's another boar, which cannot be blocked by our thing in sheep's clothing, so mm -hmm. good to know. Your thing in sheep's clothing. Whatever this thing is, I don't know what's going on with it. All right, so you, <laughs> you're attacking, I presume? Um, you know, this is really difficult. It is difficult, because if I have, you know, a good non-creature spell, then suddenly my arachnoid and my prowess guy and my sheep all get flying, and you only have two flyers to block with, so I don't know. My arachnoid's doing a pretty good job here. All right, pass turn, go ahead. Pass turn, yep. I think, I mean, it's not what you want to be doing right there, but I think it's kind of what you have to it's do. It's the safest bet. Yeah. So, wow. Just wow. <laughs> All right. 
Well, one, two, three, four, five. We will cast See You in Hell oh. on the Feather Swine and the Scavenging Vulture. Okay. And then we will... Oh, I paid way too much mana for that. So we have three mana left over, and then we'll tap remaining two for five for Penetrating Round, and we will kill the Vulture. Give it minus three, minus three. All right, so my Vulture and my Feather Swine are dead. Yep, and you lose three life. Oh, man, that's rough. Down four, and oh, by the way, Prowess twice on this guy. Oh, All of our snap. things have flying. And we'll attack in the uh, air for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh, 10, 11. Oh, nice job, dude. <laughs> so is that game over? That's game over, yeah. Wow. wow. Man, you know, I was hoping at least it was looking good for me, and then you, you did what you just did. and Yeah, well, we, we kind of got a decent, we got a good curve there, and I think that's still very important in this set. Like, getting a good curve, being aggressive is just super important. And as soon as the tide turned for us, when we got that arachnid down, and you just didn't have an answer for it right away, Yeah. we were able to just, whoops, I win the game. Yeah, I mean, the first game, even though I lost and it was a tight game, I had so much removal in my hand that, would, that you know, helped me along the way. But this game, I didn't see anything. Yeah, well, I mean, it made up for, I mean, your hand was still very good. You had, like, yeah. a Naki Shepherd yeah, and I stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it was like decent. That. It was aggressive, but, like, it wasn't. There was no removal, and I think that hindered me a bit. So, so maybe I, th- I should have mulled. So I think some things we learned from the sealed, uh, the sealed matches that one slower decks are viable mm. if you have good removal. So uh. like see you in hell, penetrating round is fine. Dead aim's good. You need good removal, and then I think you can do a slower deck. And see you in hell for a common is fantastic. Mm. I really like this card. It's very powerful. So cool, those were some fun games. And then the last thing Abby and I are going to do for the Lorado Wild West Magic set is we're going to do a draft. So we'll see how that, with all of our knowledge, we'll put it all together and try and build the best draft deck that we can. See you then.